What makes North Carolina a t different? It's not just one thing. For example, at a t your professors will challenge you to excel because they want you to succeed. In fact, more black students have graduated from a t since 2019. Engineering, journalism, agriculture, and liberal arts than any other campus in America. Those graduates go on to earn the second highest starting salaries of any university in the UNC system. That's why 98% of Aggies rate their decision to attend a t great. More than that, it's the vibe. There's nothing like the Aggie experience. You always know, a t got you. The Aggie pride is real. Become one of them. You'll learn quickly why at North Carolina a t we are. Always doing, but never done. Greetings. Welcome Aggies to the 2023-2024 Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training Webinar hosted by the Office of Undergraduate Admissions and Office of Alumni Relations. I am Crystal Boyce, class of 2007 and 2015, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as Interim Associate Vice Chancellor for Alumni Relations at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. I am elated that you have joined us this evening for this year's Certified Recruiter Training. We appreciate all the work of our alumni across this world that contribute to this program and our recruitment efforts. The Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training is designed to give alumni the tools and information necessary when recruiting and speaking with prospective students. Today's training will include the admissions presentation by the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, the athletics presentation, information on the alumni fair request process and guidelines, and training information. Now I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Mr. Dominique Harrison, class of 2016, who is the Director of Undergraduate Admissions. Hello everyone, my name is Dominique Harrison. I have the pleasure of serving as Director of Undergraduate Admissions. Um, glad that you're watching this video today and I'm excited to be able to share some updates and some information about the Office of Undergraduate Admissions and the recruitment process as we go forward this year. So just a few highlights about what our Aggies are doing. Uh, we were founded, of course, in 1891 as a land-grant university. Um, we are a STEM-focused university. However, we offer majors within a plethora of different um, abilities that our students are able to hone their skills in here at North Carolina A&T. Uh, we are a doctoral research institution and this year we had a record 147.4 million in research and program funding for fiscal year 2023. We are also the largest HBCU in the world, coming in this year with 13,883 students. And Money Magazine also recently named us the nation's most affordably priced doctoral research campus. In regards to academics, we have seven undergraduate colleges that our academic programs are found under. Under those seven colleges, we have 117 academic areas that our students are able to get bachelor's degrees in. Even being the largest HBC in the nation, we're able to have an average class size of about 28 students and a student to faculty ratio of just 19 to one. In regards to our academic support and the resources, our Center for Academic Excellence is what we like to call the Student Support Hub. They offer tutoring, advising, and many other services to make sure that our students are thriving academically. They also serve as the primary advising center for our undecided students. We have a fastly growing study abroad program where Aggies have studied at over 200 different countries in regards to taking advantage of study abroad opportunities here at North Carolina A&T. Our career services program, Handshake is a recruitment tool 
that students use for both on and off campus employment opportunities. They also assist with preparation services, such as different trainings. We offer one of the largest career fairs in the state of North Carolina, resume prep, and many other services to make sure that our Aggies are ready to go into the workforce. In regards to student life, we have over 160 student organizations, so many different ways for our students to become involved and active members of both the campus and Greensboro communities. We're Division I Athletics in the Coastal Athletic Association. Our 150,000 square foot student center is a marvel to behold. And it's something that I think we're very proud to have here at North Carolina a and In regards to campus housing, we have 16 residence halls offering options in both all traditional, suite and apartment style and we house the highest percentage of our student population out of all North Carolina system schools. Now we're gonna go a little bit into the application process. So for the fall of 2024, our application deadlines for our incoming first year freshman students, the early action deadline is gonna be November 1st. All documents must be completed and submitted by November 15. Students who apply by the early action deadline will receive a notification of their admissions decision no later than January 30th. Another important piece of the November 1st early action deadline is it makes sure that students are eligible for scholarship consideration for merit-based scholarships. Our regular decision deadline is going to be February 1st with all documents due by February 15. Those students will receive an admissions decision no later than April 1st. So how are our students applying? We have two application options for our students. They can apply through the Aggie Admissions Portal, which can be found on the admissions webpage, or they can apply through the Common application. We have a $60 application fee. While we do accept fee waivers that are approved through College Board, ACT, and NACAC, we are also participants of the CFNC Week, which allows North Carolina residents to apply to our university free of charge that week. In regards to the items and documents that we need to complete a student's application, we must have a copy of their high school transcript. While we are test optional for this year, students still may submit electronic SAT or ACT test scores. Optional items to complete and to submit with their applications include an essay question and up to two recommendation letters. Also for our students who are taking dual enrollment courses, they must submit a separate copy of their college transcript for review. Any students that are taking AP courses, IB courses, or have taken Cambridge tests must submit to us the official test scores in order for credit to be reviewed. So what have our recent incoming Aggies looked like? The middle 50% averages for our in-state students has been a 3.6 to a 4.1 weighted GPA. Our out-of-state middle 50%, 3.92 to a 4.63 weighted GPA. What middle 50% means is we have the mid-range, we have about 25% of our students that are falling above that average, those averages, and about 25% of our students that are falling below that average. We're also looking for students that are challenging themselves within their high school environment. We're also learning and wanting to know more about who they are as a student and a person. And we're looking at how are they involved in their schools, households, and also their communities. In regards to our transfer students, deadlines for transfer applications are early action Deadline is going to be April 1st. Regular decision deadline is May 15th for all incoming transfer students. Please note that some 
of our academic areas may have minimum consideration requirements in regards to GPA and courses for all incoming students. To review transferable courses, they must be from a regionally accredited, accredited institution, and they must have a grade of a C or higher for consideration. For our spring applicants, we have one deadline for both first year and transfer students of December 1st. I'm gonna briefly cover some cost, financial aid, and scholarship information now. Hey, Crystal, stop it. So now I'm gonna cover some of the cost, financial aid, and scholarship information. For the 23-24 academic year, here are the estimated costs. When you're looking at tuition and fees, we have the breakdown for both in-state and out-of-state students, room and board breakdown, and then we also are allowing students to see what an estimate of personal expenses, transportation costs, books and supplies may entail. Now, please do note that students are able to decline the university's health insurance if they are covered and have their own personal or under their parents' insurance, they may waive that. Also, please note that the room and board cost will vary depending on the room style and meal plan that the student selects. In regards to financial aid, there are a few different types of aid. You may receive state or federal grants, loans, which must be repaid. Students may also be eligible for student work study here on campus. And then also scholarships, both internal through the university, and students may also apply external scholarships that they may receive from other entities. All students are required to fill out the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Our school code is listed there where they can list North Carolina A&T so that we may receive and retrieve that information. Please note, no student should ever pay for the FAFSA. It is a free application for all families. In regards to some of our signature scholarships, we have the Cheatham White Scholarship, the February 1 Scholarship, the Lewis and Elizabeth Dowdy Scholarship, and our National Alumni Scholarship. All of those scholarships are eligible for students to be applying through the Scholarship and Honors application. That is a separate scholarship from the Admissions Scholarship. That scholarship and the Honors application has a deadline of November 15th. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, class of 97, Associate Athletic Director of Compliance, Mr. Corey Lima. Hello Aggies, my name is Corey Lima. I serve as the Ath Associate Athletics Director for Athletics Compliance. This presentation will briefly review our membership responsibilities as a Division I member of the National Collegiate Athletic Association, also known as the NCAA. NCAA regulations govern our institutional recruiting efforts regarding prospective student athletes, otherwise known as PSAs. Before we present the most pertinent rules, let's take a look at last year's Aggie Athletics accomplishments. In the academic year of 22-23, the Aggie Athletics joined another new athletics conference, the Coastal Athletic Association formerly known as the Colonial Athletic Association. The track and field program had two All-Americans as Raheem Hales competed in the 400 meter NCAA final and Paula Salmon competed in the 100 meter hurdle NCAA final. Our women's bowling program three-peated, winning their third conference championship in a row, winning championships in the year 2021, 2022, and 2023. The baseball program had a member of their pitching staff drafted by the Miami Marlins, Mr. Xavier Meacham, 
who was also selected as a member of Team USA. And then finally, a and placed 111 student-athletes on the CAA Commissioner's Academic Honor Roll. In order to remain in good standing with the NCAA, it is our responsibility as a university uh, representatives to exhibit institutional control of our administration of intercollegiate athletics. That demonstration of institutional control begins with a basic understanding of a few NCAA recruiting terms and bylaws. Let's discuss what it means to be considered a representative of our institution's athletics interests. Bylaw 1302.16, representatives of athletics interest. A representative of an institution's athletics in interest is an individual, independent agency, corporate entity, or other organization who is known uh, or should have been known by a member of an institution's executive or athletics administration to have participated in or to be a member of an agency or organization promoting the institution's intercollegiate athletics program have made financial contributions to the athletics department or to an athletics booster organization uh, to be assisting or to have been requested by the athletics department to assist in the recruitment of PSAs. And uh, if they're assisting or have assisted in providing benefits to enrolled student athletes or their family members. And then finally, if you've been involved otherwise in promoting the institution's athletics program, you re retain this status. Once an individual or an independent agency or corporate entity or other organization is identified as such a representative, the person, independent agency or corporate entity or that organization retains that identity indefinitely. Lastly, let's review the general rule for institutional recruiting of PSAs. The general rule, all in-person on or off campus recruiting contacts with a PSA or a PSA's family shall be made only by authorized institutional staff members. Such contact, as well as correspondence and telephone calls by representatives of an athletics of an institution's athletics interest, is prohibited, except as permitted uh, in this section, which can be accessed at www.ncataggies.com. You then want to click on about and then North Carolina a and Compliance. And then you can either click on Fans and Boosters or Prospective Student Athletes for more information. All right, and I'm back. And so now we'll just briefly go over some information in regards to fair request process and guidelines. So the alumni fair request process these are the steps that should be completed before participation in any college fairs. Um, first, you must complete the Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training. Once you've done so, you're able to complete and submit the Alumni Fair Request Form at least 30 days or more prior to the fair that you're requesting. Request forms will be verified by the Office of Alumni Relations and the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. You will then receive a response once the department has an opportunity to review and consider it. If the requester has successfully completed the Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training and participation is approved, the fair will be confirmed by the Office of Undergraduate Admissions and a packet of materials will be mailed to the requester. If the requester has not completed the Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training, that fair request will be denied. If the fair request has a registration fee, it will not be approved unless the alumni requesting to participate are willing to cover that registration fee. Please make sure to indicate that on the alumni fair request form when you submit. Now, these are some important things we want you to remember. Alumni should not Confirm the university's participation at any college fair or recruitment event. Any request received less than 30 days in advance of the fair will not be approved for alumni participation. And no materials will be sent without any prior approvals. Alumni should not participate in fairs if they have not been certified and have not received the most recent and up-to-date admissions materials. 
we ask that you please discard all admissions materials prior to this training cycle where they are now obsolete and out of date. Approvals and denials will be determined by a multitude of different factors. So we please ask that you do not take any of those decisions personally. Just some quick to do's and things to consider when attending some of the effect, uh, recruitment fairs. We ask that you arrive at least 15 to 30 minutes early, business casual or appropriate attire. You must stay for the entire length of the program. Please be courteous and check in at the registration booth or assigned area and introduce yourself to the counselor or sponsor of that recruitment event. We ask that you do not collect any of the students' demographic information or collect any documents from the students. In regards to decorum, please do not stand in front of the booth or the table, no more than four representatives at a time at a college fair booth. Please only hand out literature that has been approved and provided to you. We ask that you, of course, be courteous to any other exhibitors or fair attendees. Also, make sure to keep your cell phone on silent during all events. We ask that you wait for the students, parents, and guests to approach your table and do not call or motion them to come towards you. Um, also, please make sure not to imply any type of guarantee of admissions or aid to any students, regardless of how amazing their credentials may be. And also, do not compare North Carolina a and State University with other institutions of higher education. Now. And now Crystal will come back to cover a few items in regards to the training and assessment information. We hope that you've learned a lot today on the Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training Webinar. So what's next? All information about the training dates and assessment deadlines will be posted on the website that is printed on this slide. Go to ncatsualumni.org backslash programs dash events backslash alumni dash recruiter dash training. If you have any questions about the Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training, please contact the Office of Alumni Relations at 336-433-5570 or email alumni at ncat.edu. We thank you so much for your time and commitment. We appreciate the lives you touch and appreciate you so much. Thank you for participating in the 2023-2024 Aggie Certified Alumni Recruiter Training. As always, Aggies achieve great goals in everything and produce renowned individuals dedicated to excellence. Aggie pride!